Hey, what's up guys? It's Neonate. Thought I'd try something a little different this time. As you know, placing the initial settlements is one of the most important decisions that you'll make in Catan, and it'll really make or break your game. So I thought it made sense to spend some time and practice our initial settlement placements. I encourage you to play along, pause the video at certain spots, and really try to make the best choice in terms of settlement placement and see how closely your thoughts match mine. So let's get started. As you know, the first thing that I look at when I look at a board is where are the ores. And the second thing that I look at is where are the high producing spots. This is an interesting board because the ores, the six ore and the three ore are really down near the bottom of the island and they're sort of blocked off by that desert. So that's gonna make it difficult to get ore as the first player, I'd most likely be looking at this 5, 9, 10 spot. It's a high producing spot worth 11 points, and it's also next to that 10 ore. So I think that's a good spot. When I look around the board, it looks like there's plenty of spaces to get wheat and brick. So I feel pretty good about this 5, 9, 10. I would place my initial settlement there and point my road towards the coast with the idea of getting to probably the 3-1 port. As the second player, I don't think I can put my initial settlement on the 3-6. The production is just too low at this point. So I would also want to get next to that 10 ore, and I think that 3-8-10 is a reasonable spot worth 10 points. Gives me just a tiny bit of wheat. In terms of pointing my road, I can see that the first player is already pointing towards potentially that 3-1 port. I probably don't want to contest that person and so I would probably point my road towards the 4-8 brick port, which is actually a great spot worth 8 points. I have an eye towards getting next to some of those juicy brick tiles later in the game. The danger would be someone might take the 3-4-6 and race me to that 4-8, but I think I'd have a decent shot at getting there versus someone who took that spot, so I think that's a risk I'm willing to take. Now the third position in this board is really tricky, I think. There's a lot of different options for the third player, and I'd like you to give it a shot and think about where you would place this settlement. So I think in this position, there's really two directions you can take. One is the wheat port. There's a ton of wheat on this board. That juicy wheat port there in the corner is definitely one potential strategy that you can go with. The other potential strategy is to go ahead and try to get on that 3-6 ore and then get enough wheat and sheep to be basically a city and night machine. And, you know, I think the traditional advice that I would give as the third player is look at the board, look at the rarest resources, and try to get next to those to give, give you the most options. And so on this board, arguably, wood and ore are the most rare resource. The problem the third player has is there's someone who's going to act behind him. And so <laughs> let's take the wheat port strategy first. In a vacuum, you'd think, look at the 5, 9, 10, and you'd be like, okay, that's a great spot. I'll point towards the wheat port, and it's a high producing spot worth 11 points, uh, and I'll be, you know, have a jump start towards that wheat port, and I'm going to be doing great. The problem with that is it leaves open the 5, 6, 12, and who, you know, the person that takes that spot is highly motivated to get to the 9, 12 at all as well. And so they are can potentially foil your plans and really ruin your com game completely. And that's something you want to really want to avoid. You know, the only way to lock up that wheat port would be to take the 5, 9, 12, which is only worth 4 plus 4 plus 1, which is 9 points. So that, you know, is a little weak, but that's the way to guarantee you the wheat port. The other option is to go ahead and, and try to take that 3, 6, or and the core layer to that is you could potentially take the 5, 6, 11, which is a great spot, you know, worth 11 points. And I think going there, you're basically signaling that your next spot you want the 3, 6. And I think that's a problem as well, because <laughs> if the fourth player takes the 3, 6, your, your game is over. And um, I, I've noticed that when players can tell exactly what you need... <laughs> they end up screwing you more often than not. With that said, I think the surprise move for red would be to take the 4, 6, 11. And that is worth 10 points. I would point my road towards the 3, 1 port. And I think this gives you flexibility. It allows white 
to make the decision, are they going to go for the wheat port or are they going to go for the ore strategy? And if they go for the ore strategy by taking the 5611 and the 36, then you can happily take the 5910 and there's not going to be anybody who's going to contest you for that wheat port. Uh, alternatively, if they go for the wheat port strategy, if they take something, you know, like the 5912 and 3611, then, you know, you can potentially still get next to those ores indirectly by taking the 348 or the 4810 and m making your way with your road producing abilities to get over to the 36. So I like this 4611 in this spot. I think as the fourth player here, you really are weighing two different decisions, which is one, either going for the ore wheat strategy or going for the wheat port strategy. So let's take a look at the wheat port strategy. You really probably have to take the 5912 to lock that spot up. So that spot's worth nine points. You'd point your road towards the wheat port. Then you'd try not to duplicate your five wheat. So you'd Think about the 4A10, which really gives you a lot of brick you don't really need, or you'd likely take the 3611 worth nine points, and that'll give you three tiles producing wheat. But on the whole, I think your production is pretty low if you pick those two spots, the second spot being only worth nine points. So you'd have 18 points from the get go, and you still have to get to the wheat port in order to convert things to ore. So I think that's a little bit weaker than I would like. If I were in the fourth position, I think the stronger strategy is to take the 5, 6, 11 and the 3, 6 and just try to upgrade to cities and buy development cards. And with that said, I would probably take the 3, 6 first and then the 5, 6, 11 second just to get three cards rather than two. So I think the third player is pretty happy in this position. The only sensible choice is to take that 5, 9, 10 and head towards the sheep port the second player really is looking at this 4A10 or potentially the 348. Looks like he's going to have a great shot at, you know, getting to that 4A port. It's either the 348 to bolster his ore production or the 4A10, and then you could potentially point your road towards that ore. I'd also think about where blue is going to go. Blue clearly needs brick and wheat. So blue would love to get to that 810. And I think by <laughs> by that fact that gives me the reason to place on the 4A10 uh, a little bit more wheat definitely helps me. And then I can point my road towards the 3 ore to get more ore or potentially to the 3, 4 if, if I can beat white to that spot. So now as the first player, you're kind of screwed, which is why a lot of people hate going first. You know, you really need wheat uh, no wheat equals defeat and looking around the board there's only one reasonable spot to, to get wheat and that's 3 9 11 and you don't even get very much and you duplicate your nine which you don't really want to do so let's assess the players blue has 11 points plus four two two eight points so that's 19 points really low wheat so he's going to have a very difficult game i mean his goal should be to get to that three one port and to trade as much as possible for wheat and try to you know develop uh, cities and and buy development cards but he's going to have a tough game no doubt about it the second player who is orange has a pretty clear goal as well is to get to that brick port and then convert bricks to ores and upgrade his settlements to cities and he could buy development cards, or since he will have wood and brick production, he may be able to sneak in and take long road. So he's a bit of a double threat. I think red, his strategy is uh, is pretty clear. It's to get to that wheat port. And then if I were him, you know, upgrade your settlements to cities and really use those wheats. I think he's a threat. He's close enough that he can connect his roads to take long road, or he can buy development cards and depending on on what those development cards are, he could go for largest army. I think white is clearly going for largest army. It really doesn't have a choice in the matter. He needs to upgrade his settlements to cities and buy development cards and try to build that third settlement either at the 411 or the 34 or the, probably the 26. I mean, with the way this played out, you really have to wonder if the 5910 was the right choice for the first move. It seems really obvious. It seems like a no-brainer given the way the rest of the board looks but i could not have predicted that it would end up you know i think in of these four players i think 
blue has probably the most difficult prospects in this game. So it makes me question that 5, 9, 10. Anyway, how'd you guys do? Did you guys pick the same settlements that I did? Let me know in the comments below. Let me know what you think about that third pick, which I think is the most fun to think about. I hope you liked the video and uh, let me know if you uh, want to see more like this. Thanks, guys.